What is going on in my beautiful native New Zealand? Disasters. This year, the worst cyclone to hit the country in a century was followed only days later by a devastating earthquake, such that the Prime Minister, Chris Hipkins, said, I was looking out the window for a plague of locusts. Weeks later, another earthquake put New Zealand on alert for a tsunami, not to mention droughts like we have never seen, turning the beautiful rich green landscape to brown. And this from just a few days ago. There are fears in the Bay of Plenty that one lake may overflow into another with disastrous consequences. Heavy rain has filled these two lakes, Rotoma and Rotuehu, and they're getting bigger, engulfing six homes so far as water levels rise. The soil saturated, water in both Lake Rotoehu and Rotoma has nowhere to go but up. Since the start of the year, Otatu Bay on Lake Rotoehu has seen water levels go from this to this. The growing lake has caused widespread damage and forced evacuations. So the water has been slowly but surely rising. The residents said death by millimetres. Disasters, death by millimetres and the moral decline. What is going on? Welcome to Morning Tea. to Andrew Lee and if we haven't met I'm here to offer you a sip of inspiration and encouragement to lift your spirit and strengthen you wherever you are on your faith journey. So I immigrated to the United States many years ago and have always maintained a pride for my Kiwi heritage. Yes New Zealand is small but we are a cutting edge nation. We were the first in the world to give women the right to vote. And it's God's zone, a breathtakingly beautiful land. It's a country founded on God and the recognition of the Lord Jesus Christ. So around 1814, missionaries arrived and they converted without any force about 60% of the Maoris to Christianity in a space of only about 35 years. The missionaries also played a role in ending the Maori intertribal wars. They convinced them to stop killing each other because tens of thousands were already dead or taken captive into slavery. There was a movement by God into the entire South Pacific region. And I'll add, since I love Fiji so much, I've been there many times, the missionaries convinced the Fijians to stop not just killing each other, but eating each other. And they went from being cannibals to Christians. The missionaries brought to New Zealand reading, education, and translated the Bible into the Maori language. Fast forward about 160 years to my public high school, which began each day in assembly with the singing of a hymn, with a Bible reading from our school-issued New Testament, and we would all kneel down as the headmistress led the school in prayer. One of my classes was entitled Israel, Our Friend, as I remember it. And then there was Sunday. Sunday was the Lord's Day. The country basically shut down for most businesses and shopping and the streets were very quiet as citizens went to church or they spent time at home with their families. There was the national anthem. Well, we had two, actually, both dedicated to God. We had God Save Our Gracious Queen, which recently just became God Save Our Gracious King, and Our Magnificent God of Nations. At thy feet, in the bonds of love we meet. And it goes on. Men of every creed and race, gather here before thy face, asking thee to bless this place. God, defend our free land. And Parliament, each new session began with a prayer. Almighty God, humbly acknowledging our need for thy guidance in all things, and laying aside all private and personal interests, we beseech thee to grant that we may conduct the affairs of this house and of our country to the glory of thy holy name, the maintenance of true religion and justice, the honour of the Queen and the public welfare, peace and tranquility of New Zealand through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Wow, what a heritage. Fast forward 50 odd years to today. Jesus Christ has been removed from the parliamentary prayer. The Abortion Legislation Act has removed abortion from the Crimes Act of 1961, paving the way for abortion up till the moment of birth. And the standards of our leadership, the 40th Prime Minister of New Zealand, Jacinda Ardern, who resigned earlier this year, was an agnostic. She was unmarried and pregnant. She was living in fornication with her boyfriend, which is such a far cry from the first Premier, Henry Sewell. An Anglican churchman he was with his wife Elizabeth and six children, always punctilious in attendance at worship. The new conversion therapy law makes it a civil offence now to perform conversion therapy on anyone who is younger than 18 or who lacks decision-making capacity. It's punishable by up to three years in prison, and anyone who performs a practice that causes serious harm to the individual, regardless of their age, could face up to five years. And how about plain madness? I mean, New Zealand has designated a river 
as a person. Whanganui River became the first in the world to be considered a legal person. New Zealand's third longest river could now be represented in court and had two guardians appointed to speak on its behalf. And Israel. The Israel Institute of New Zealand writes in an article, is New Zealand morally bankrupt? A definition of this melody states, moral bankruptcy is the stage a country or organization reaches when it trades away or violates too many of its core values and commitments. And with regard to the various UN resolutions, when it came to the crunch and Israel found itself the target of continual condemnatory resolutions, New Zealand either voted with the immoral majority or abstained. This is not the first time Israel has been sold down the river by those calling themselves friends. And it won't be the last. There are many parallels between the United States and New Zealand, both having been British colonies with an acknowledgement of God at the founding, but then a falling away from honoring him as the creator, as the giver of all good things. And now the current social conditions that have placed us both at a precipice. Israel as a nation chosen by God, his special people have very specific and conditional blessings. For the rest of us, the rest of the nations, they are still owned by God. His eyes watch the nations, let not the rebellious rise up against him. And he makes nations great and destroys them. And we can see a clear pattern of God's judgment on nations that forsake him. The most well-known is, of course, Sodom and Gomorrah. Then the Lord said the outcry against Sodom and Gomorrah is so great and their sins so grievous. And in another place, he will stretch out his hand against the north and destroy Assyria, leaving Nineveh utterly desolate and as dry as the desert. This is the city of revelry that lived in safety. She said to herself, I am the one. There is none beside me. Is this where we are? Have we forgotten God and say, I am the one? I have not prayed for New Zealand for quite some time, but two weeks ago, my father passed away. And as happens when you move through grief, thoughts and feelings emerge. And I felt this urging to go back and look to my childhood and the land where I was raised. And now I'm going to be praying for my beautiful New Zealand, along with my beautiful United States of America. Any of you expats or immigrants with me? I'm so glad you're here. What are your thoughts on this topic? I want to hear from you, so please leave your comments below. I'm here every week, so don't go without subscribing because we all need inspiration. We need encouragement to stay in this race, to keep up a good pace. So have a great week. I look forward to seeing you next time. Remember to look for the blessings. They're all. Bye-bye.